It may seem like the idea of animals from different species becoming friends is only something that happens in Disney cartoons, but in reality, there are many examples of unexpected animal relationships in the world. Here are seven of the weirdest ones. Number seven, gobies and pistol shrimp. The idea of a delicious seafood meal of fish and shrimp is enough to make one's mouth water. But today we'll delve into another fascinating relationship that exists between two unique sea creatures, the goby fish and the pistol shrimp. The pistol shrimp is a small and almost completely blind creature that faces the constant threat of being preyed upon by various predators in the water. To avoid this, the shrimp needs a protector, and that's where the goby fish comes in. The goby fish acts as a loyal guard dog for the shrimp, with both creatures forming a close partnership. They stay in contact via the shrimp's antenna, and the fish is always on high alert, scanning the surroundings for any potential predators. The pistol shrimp is a burrower, and the goby fish lives in the burrow that the shrimp creates. This is where the partnership gets even more interesting. As the shrimp cleans out its burrow, the fish ensures its safety, keeping a watchful eye out for any potential threats. This mutually beneficial relationship allows the two creatures to thrive in the ocean, despite the challenges they face. It's a wonderful example of how different species can work together to survive and thrive in their environment. Number six, manta ray and remora. Manta rays are one of the most majestic things that you're ever going to see in the ocean not the least of which is because they're often very huge creatures that seem to glide every time they swim. They can reach wingspans of up to 25 feet and weigh as much as 5,000 pounds. So how is it that something that big and agile needs help from a fish like a remora? Remoras are eight species of small marine fish that are sometimes called sucker fish or shark suckers. Over time, they developed flatter front-facing dorsal fins that act like suction cups, which allows them to attach themselves to manta rays, sharks, and other large marine vertebrates. As you likely have guessed, the remora helps clean the skin of the manta ray, which ensures that it's free from parasites, and in return, gets food from the famous messy eaters, and they get a free ride around the ocean as well. Number five, ravens and wolves. Although I am tempted to make a Game of Thrones reference, the show's unsatisfying ending still leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Despite wolves' reputations as legendary hunters and ravens' cleverness, it's surprising that they have formed a unique alliance. Their relationship is based on a simple yet effective strategy that revolves around one thing, food. Using their skills as messenger birds, ravens locate wolf packs and guide them to a carcass. However, the raven doesn't devour the carcass on its own. Instead, it relies on the wolves to help expose the meat inside. In return, the wolves get a free meal while the raven feeds on the scraps that the pack leaves behind. This partnership is truly remarkable, especially when considering that it works in all seasons, but it's particularly helpful during winter. Number four, sloths and algae. Now here's another pairing that you would not expect to see because let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, sloths, well, they're quite slow and lazy. You can't really deny it. They are, they've been that way for a while and they're not going to change. Granted, when they aren't being lazy, they can be downright terrifying. But since they're lazy most of the time, people don't really notice. Who would team up with such a lazy creature? Well, algae, that's who or what in this case, but how does it all work? Well, the fur of the sloths are known to be full of spots for algae to live in. And because they have moisture, the alga can feed off of that pretty easily. In return, the algae turn the fur of the sloths green, giving them a kind of camouflage that's very useful to the slow movers in the trees. Number three, hornbills and mongoose. The Teru Desert region of Kenya is home to a unique ecosystem where the dwarf mongooses and endemic bird species, such as the hornbill, have formed a remarkable relationship. These small creatures have formed foraging communities that work together in a way that benefits both parties. The prey spectra of the mongoose and hornbills almost completely overlap, leading to an interesting behavior where they patiently wait for one another to finish eating before they take their turn. This cooperative behavior results in a diverse range of food available to both species. The relationship between them goes beyond just food sharing. 
Both the mongoose and hornbill are at risk of falling prey to certain predators, so they keep a lookout and warn each other if they spot any danger. This warning behavior is especially important since the Teru Desert region is home to various raptor species that pose a danger to the dwarf mongooses and the hornbills. The cooperation between the dwarf mongooses and hornbills is a prime example of how different species can come together in a mutually beneficial relationship. This symbiotic relationship allows both species to thrive and survive in the harsh environment of the Teru Desert. Number 2. Leafcutter Ants and Fungi this is a bit of science that I didn't really know about at first, and that makes it all the more intriguing because you've no doubt known about leafcutter ants. They're the ones who cut leaves for various purposes for the colony, and the catch is they're not actually eating the leaves as many would suspect rather, they use the leaves to grow fungi, but why? Well, that way they can use it for their colonies and eat the fungi. The ants crush and cut the leaves and even discharge fecal liquids, in order to break down the suitable pieces for their fungus farms. Yes, these ants are true farmers, and they're more than happy to do this on the regular, so that they can get food for both of them, and the young ants in the colony as well talk about having a perfect system in place. Number 1. Clownfish and Sea Anemones I mentioned earlier that I would come back to the topic of anemones. If a crab was able to recognize the benefits of living in anemones, then it's possible that other sea creatures could as well. The movie Finding Nemo demonstrates this idea perfectly. Certain fish, like clownfish such as marlin and Nemo, have learned to live inside anemones to stay safe from predators. The anemones stain is a deterrent for predators, and if the fish are inside, they can be far away from the predator's grasp while also having a place to live. Interestingly, the waste produced by the fish living inside anemones provides nutrients that the anemone needs to survive. Therefore, the fish feed the anemones, and the anemones protect the fish. It's a great system that benefits both parties. That's all from the realm of weird animal relationships. Were you surprised that all these different kinds of animals were able to strike up relationships with each other that weren't within their species or even likely to mingle with them? Which of those combinations did you find the most intriguing? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.